The Will You Grow Show goes live Sundays 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern. To receive notifications, click the subscribe button beneath this video or visit YouTube's Will You Grow channel to see more shows and videos. And now, here's Will You founder Angelique Meadow with this week's Will You Grow Show. Welcome to the Will You Grow Show. How are you? I'm Angelique, founder of Will You and WillYouGrow.com, an inspirational multimedia company that provides education and mentoring to nurture empowerment and joy. Our weekly grow show begins by tackling touchy subjects that'll tickle your tempestuous thoughts, fan your eternal flame, and salve your soul with hope. Halfway through, we'll take a 60-second look at what people have to say about us, and then we'll go hands-on to share tips and tools to begin implementing today's lesson into your life. Here in the studio with me today are our audio aficionado, Ben. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and our video Santa, Neil. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> they help make this show happen while sharing their personal perspectives and colorful commentary. That's what we're here for. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Life and Nature, who keep our hearts beating and our world turning, and by the Carrie Campbell Foundation, which supports creative video content that increases love among all people. Love that! We say thank you to the Carrie Campbell Foundation and each and every sponsor and donor. We'd also like to thank each and every viewer who hits the subscribe button and the notification bell, the like button, and the share button today. It helps the channel grow and makes it easier for new people to find and watch our videos. Now, on to today's episode, Learning Without Words. Oh, the irony of doing a YouTube show <laughs> and speaking to talk with you about this, but we'd like to be able to reach you, so here we go. Could the quiet things actually teach us the most? Some infinitely wise beings have given us glimpses into the power of learning without words. It is written that Jesus spent 40 days alone in the desert and received messages from God. Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment while meditating alone under a tree. Muhammad lived in a cave where it is written that he received messages from the angel Gabriel. And the spiritual teacher Sadhguru said, If you have the opportunity to sit with a spiritual person, this is not the time for questions. Just be with them, and an exchange will occur. There is a type of learning that occurs much like osmosis. Scientifically, Osmosis is the diffusion that takes place between two liquids or gases capable of mixing through its semi-permeable membrane. Put another way, osmosis is the reciprocal influence between two elements that are in contact physically or energetically. Osmosis learning is learning based on the reciprocal influence between two individuals and it occurs unconsciously, meaning it happens without consciously trying to learn. We can learn by osmosis from any form of life. Animals, trees, earth, elements, and people, including spiritual leaders. Here's an example of what Swami Kriyananda wrote about his experience of learning from his spiritual teacher, Paramhansa Yogananda an Indian Hindu monk, yogi, and guru who introduced millions to the teachings of meditation and Kriya Yoga through his organization, Self-Realization Fellowship, and who lived his last 32 years in America. Quote, The closer we drew to him spiritually, the less he sought to teach us by words. I prefer to speak with the eyes, he once told me. He never wanted to impose his instructions on us from without. His method of teaching was, rather, to help us dig wells of intuitive insight within ourselves. The closer we felt to him, the closer we came to knowing our own true self, the God within us." Unquote. 
And to quote the website educationtask.com, a website for educators nationwide, it concurs, quote, learning through osmosis is a form of learning that is inevitable, that occurs in every situation and context and in every experiential moment for people. It is a daily and constant learning in that if it occurs in positive and stimulating environments with extraordinary people, it can be transformative, unquote. So here's a short story of how I began learning from nature about life through osmosis and observation and without words. Growing up, my immediate family lived in a small town of about 60,000 people, and my father's parents lived on a farm a couple of hours away in a town that was so small that it wasn't even incorporated. On weekends, I worked on that farm. I side-raked hay, mended fences, helped fix broken equipment, fed and counted cattle, mowed the lawn, pulled weeds, and hammered old rusty nails until they were straight again so they could be reused. While I worked, as far as my eyes could see, there were no people, and there was no talking. With the exception of fixing equipment and straightening nails, the rest of the work was outside and in nature, so I spent most of my time not talking. <laughs> it made me a good observer. I watched how the plant life moved with the winds, and I learned the difference between a breeze for movement and a breeze that carried a storm behind it, warning me to head for cover. I watched how the plants grew and learned the difference between a plant that thrived in full sun and a plant that needed shade and a lot of water in order to survive. I watched how the animals communicated to me and their animal clan about their health and needs, and I learned the difference between an animal that approached me out of curiosity and an animal that approached to threaten my physical well-being. I watched and listened as animals used their voices to warn each other when predators were nearby. By taking time to sit with the animals, I began to be able to think like them, much like the well-known movie, The Horse Whisperer. This ability also applied to equipment. I listened to the sound of the equipment and learned that the consistent sound of a working engine shows its health and inconsistent sounds, a quick change in the volume of sounds or odd movements can indicate problems. Sometimes I could even preemptively predict when a piece of equipment would break down before it actually happened. Nearly all of my learning at that farm was without words. That's the beginning of my story, and the lessons I received are exceedingly valuable and useful to me today. So, how might you consider learning more from life by osmosis and observation without words? As you think on this, we'll take a quick break to see what people have to say. When we come back, we'll hear from the crew, talk tips, tools, and elements from Mother Nature to enhance our power to learn without words. The Will You Grow Show will now take 60 seconds to check in with you. If you're wondering how to apply a Grow Show topic to your life, here's what people say about mentoring with Angelique. I think she just sensed that I was very uptight with uh, my emotions. And she's been able to guide me and help me know those emotions. When you get in tune with your feelings, uh, for me it brought a lot of joy, a lot of confidence. I think it was more just knowing that the emotions I wasn't using, they weren't there. And I think she was able to sense that and in her natural gifted way was able to get me to deal with them. She has a, uh, a knack for what she does that's real, honest, professional. 
It's hard to describe her because it's wonderful. This is your girl. Um, <laughs> Self-care is not selfish. If you really want to dig deep and stop living on the surface, then schedule a conversation with Angelique. And now, back to the Will You Grow show with Will You founder, Angelique Meadow. Welcome back. Before we dive into tips and tools, let's see what the crew has to say about the topic. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, even from the very first part of the episode, when you, when you, were, when you first said you're going to talk about learning without speaking, my first thought is like, yeah, in audio, I mean, when you go to work at a, yeah. in a music studio, you don't talk. You don't offer an opinion on anything. And if someone tells you to go do something, you run and you do that thing. You're making yourself just their arm or their, you know, finger or something. They don't need your ears or your mind yet. Um, and, you know, it's years of that until it's that person's mind is in your head and you're thinking like them. And then, you know, it could be anything. It could be scientific or technical or it could be just working with a client. Um yeah, and the ability it's a, it's to a read, learn by osmosis situation for and sure. And read their face. Yeah. Read if they like it <laughs> by their expressions or if they're stoic, you know, like. Uh, and also on the other side, if you're in the the voiceover booth, if yeah. you're the talent, you're learning not from what the producer is saying because they're not going to be honest with you. So <laughs> you're, you can read the vibes in the room yeah. sort of and know what you need to be doing. Yep. What a great social experiment it would be to put today's teens in a room, take away their phones, and just have them observe and see what they could learn from each other without sound. I think that would be amazing just to see how they look at each other and see what they can read off of each other if they're I think that would be could be disastrous. It could it could go it could go one of two ways. It could be good <laughs> or it could, they could lose their minds and be jonesing for their phones afterwards. But I think he's an optimist. I am. I'm an eternal optimist. I'm like, you know, I'm not really. <laughs> there is a lot to be learned. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I was just talking with a client this week about when we hear something that we think is a great idea, very often the first thing that people say is they can think of someone else who would be a really good idea for. Yes. It's never a good idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good idea for somebody. <laughs> Me? No. This guy? Yeah. Yeah, so we know how easy it is to get people to do what we want, right? <laughs> oh, it's so easy. Especially but children. <laughs> we can apply it to ourselves. I mean, if the kids can watch us learning by observation and then hear us talk about what we learned, right. at least we could inspire some curiosity, which is always good. Yeah. Cool. Great feedback, guys. Awesome. And now it's metaphysical tool time. Our healing stone for today is the lapis lazuli. And the information is from firemountaingems.com. Ben, would you like to share information about today's stone? It would be my pleasure. Lapis lazuli is one of the oldest opaque gemstones in history more than 6,500 years old. This deep blue stone includes tiny flecks of mica, like a night sky full of stars. Its most well-known source is deep in the mountains of modern Afghanistan. The stone's two-part name comes from two different cultures. Lapis is a Latin word meaning stone, while lazuli comes from a Persian word which means blue. It is neither an element nor a mineral. It is a rock containing multiple minerals. Lazurite diopside, calcite, pyrite, and more. And if you're a geologist, feel free to correct me in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> Biblical scholars believe that references in the Old Testament to sapphire actually indicate lapis lazuli, as the sapphire gemstone was not known in the Middle East before the Roman Empire. Beloved by the ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, Minoans, Chinese, Greeks, and into the Roman era, this deep blue stone has been used in the finest art through the ages. One of the most famous uses of the stone is in the death mask of King Tutankhamun, 
where it is inlaid with turquoise and carnelian and bright gold. One of his successors, Cleopatra, was known to use ground lapis lazuli as eyeshadow. Marco Polo wrote about the lapis lazuli mines way back in 1271. In the Middle Ages, painters ground up lapis lazuli to make the deep blue paint called ultramarine. The blue used to paint the robes of Mary of Nazareth on church walls and ceilings like in the Sistine Chapel. Meanwhile, in South America, pre-Columbian cultures such as the Diawita and Inca were carving, trading, and warring over lapis lazuli from mines in what is now Argentina and Chile. Now for metaphysical properties of lapis lazuli. The Sumerians believed that the spirit of their gods lived within the stone, while the ancient Egyptians saw it as a symbol of the night sky. Since the earliest of times, lapis lazuli has been associated with strength and courage, royalty and wisdom, intellect and truth. From antiquity, it has been worn in the belief that it will ward off evil. In ancient Egypt, it was powdered and worn about the eyes to improve eyesight. Is that like a football player putting the stuff on oh, the <laughs> Watch the glare in ancient Egypt. <laughs> Today, it is considered by some to be an aid to balancing the brow chakra, which influences vision and hearing. Imbalances of the brow, or blue chakra, are said to cause headaches, anxiety, and disorders of the skin. Because of its ability to protect and enhance our strength, courage, wisdom, intellect, and truth, the lapis lazuli is a great stone to wear, put in one's pocket, or keep close by when we'd like to learn beyond and between words. Oh, thank oh. you, Ben. And today's healing elements of nature are the wind and the animal kingdom. Neil, blow us away with your insights. <laughs> Gone with the wind. <laughs> the wind, although wordless, carries information and wisdom. Physically, the wind can bring to us a fresh breath of air. It can inform us of what's nearby, such as the scent of flowers, the ocean, which I love and I'm ready to go back to, or a funnel cake stand. Now I'm hungry. The, the wind can also warn us of danger, be it a fire or a gas leak. The wind can also be a messenger of the heavens, so to speak, and can carry intuitive information when we know how to listen. If we've ever felt a breeze and then just knew something, the information may have arrived via the wind. The wind can also carry hope and relief. Have you ever felt refreshed by a beautiful breeze? Well, of course, I have. We all have. Mm-hmm. The following information about the healing power of the wind is from practicalshaman.com, and it shows us how we can receive the cleansing blessing from the wind at any time. Wind is nature's cleanser. It removes what no longer serves us. After a windstorm, the sky is generally clear and the air feels pure. We can literally bathe and cleanse ourselves in the wind. The exercise is called wind bathing. The process can reveal what's hidden in the unconscious and release the inner blockages that prevent us from moving forward with grace and confidence. This exercise can also prepare us for a new cycle of regeneration. A wind wash or bath is a great exercise for restoring harmony and balance within. Whenever we feel stressed, we can purposely call on the wind for relief. All we need to do is so strongly imagine the wind or have a real and steady current of air blowing at us. And all we need to do is stand in it with our arms out like we're welcoming a hug. Close our eyes to more deeply experience our body and then turn our body into the wind as if we're on a rotisserie. See, I'm hungry again. Yes, you, <laughs> yes, you too can be a wind-blown chicken. <laughs> I've always dreamed of being a wind-blown chicken. <laughs> No, just kidding. Just get yourself out into the wind and let it wash that gray feeling right out of your hair. If I had hair, that would be awesome. Although we cannot see the wind, we can see its effects. When the wind moves through the trees, its leaves dance. When the wind moves across the ocean, waves sway, rise, and fall. The wind causes many things, even more than we may realize. Like the information and wisdom that is available to us, although we may neither see, hear, smell, taste, nor touch the effects of the wind, they are innumerable and everywhere. Oh, yes. It makes me want to get into somebody's convertible and drive. 
Hey, Neil, do you still have that little video snippet of me in that awesome convertible? I do have that, and I will play that for everyone. Makes me miss my Jeep. <laughs> miss my baby Jeep. Enjoying the ride all the way. And our healing animals for today are the entire animal kingdom. Although animals don't communicate with words, they most certainly communicate. Yes, they do. Whether it's the wagging tail of a dog, deer, or our dulcet darling, all animals communicate through body language, sound, and energy. The animal kingdom is also highly attuned to the intentions and energetic state of others. This helps them avoid being eaten, which is a good thing, and keeps them safe from a myriad of predatory predicaments. When we take time to observe any of the members of the animal kingdom, we can quickly learn that words are often unnecessary to communicate and live effectively. Perfect. Just ask Rudy, the wonder dog. He knows how to communicate. Stands by the door at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And Rudy is your dog. And Rudy is my dog. Yes, Rudy is my dog. <laughs> not my son or my... <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully said, Neil. And our healing flower for today is the peony, or as they call them in the southern U.S., the peony. <laughs> I say tomato, you, you say... say tomato, potato. I say potato, uh, you say... Potato. <laughs> potato <laughs> right. Tomato, potato. <laughs> Generally, peonies symbolize prosperity, good luck love and honor. Historically, peonies were valued for both their beauty as well as their medicinal uses. In ancient and medieval times, their roots and seeds were believed to cure over 20 diseases, including epilepsy and snake bites. In England, children wore peony root necklaces to prevent seizures and help teething pain. Peonies are native to China. Highly valued, they are often referred to as the king of flowers and were China's national flower prior to 1929. Peonies have been popular in China since the Sui dynasty when they were planted at the imperial palace and symbolized nobility, honor, and wealth. One of the most popular cities in China to see peonies is Luoyang, which is sometimes referred to as the city of peony. It houses the National Peony Garden, which has over 100 different kinds of peonies and hosts an annual peony festival in April and May. Luoyang National Peony Garden is one of the oldest gardens to grow and reproduce peonies in China. There are over 1 million peony plants, featuring 1,200 types of peonies. The blooms are highly reputed for their lavish flowers, flamboyant colors, numerous species, and lasting fluorescence. And the garden is especially famous for its 1,600-year-old, three-meter-high, peony king. Learn more online at chinahighlights.com forward slash festivals. In the U.S., there are peony festivals in Sparta, Kentucky, Noblesville, Indiana, and in Van Wert, Ohio in May and very early June. So get out there and smell the sweetness and feel the sunshine on your shoulders. Makes me happy. <laughs> yes. So what say ye? Could you and your family benefit from learning without words? How can you allow yourself to talk less and learn more? Let us know in the comment section so we can learn from each other. And as always, we thank you for watching and sharing time together with us. If you liked today's show, we'd be honored if you'd hit the subscribe button and the bell to receive weekly updates. Hit the like button to let us know that you like what we're doing and hit the share button to share this message with people you care about. If you feel inspired to give a financial gift to help keep the show coming, click the green will you circle that's located below this video. Find the words yes you can at the top, then look to the right to click the donate button. All amounts are respected and appreciated. To see more of our videos, they're also available by clicking that green Will You button below this video and then scrolling down. If you'd like to talk about mentoring with me, feel free to schedule your complimentary conversation at willyougrow.com today 
and I'll look forward to speaking with you soon. And for now, we bid you adieu. Take excellent care of your very fine self, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Always with love, I send to you from Angelique. Thanks, guys. Yay! <laughs> For more information about programs offered by Will You, Mentoring with Angelique, and to watch video success stories from clients, explore willyougrow.com. If you or your company are interested in inspiring our mutual audience by sponsoring this or another of our programs, let's talk about it. Boost viewer confidence and trust in your company. Call 1-833-WILL-YOU, then press extension number 6. Make sure to click the subscribe button to get reminders before upcoming shows.